Okay, so I accidentally just stopped my video and I didn't mean to, so guess what? I'm probably going to post two videos again. <laughs> I, I, I probably will get editing bit figured out eventually, but, um, uh, anyways, <laughs> what I was saying about clowns and the uncanny value and the fact that I, um, or uncanny valley, uh, the fact that I'm playing a clown on my show, I've never been a huge fan of clowns, they kind of creep me out. I uh, don't know why, I guess. <laughs> um, I was I was a kid that tried to outsmart them when I was little. Like if they, there was I remember there being a clown doing tricks one time and I was just like, Oh yeah? Yeah? Well I, th I think I see how you did that. That was terrible. But um now I'm all for it. Uh anyways. <laughs> um yeah, so I'm playing clown, which is gonna be it, you know, it'll probably be a lot of fun. That's another thing I have to do tonight is probably look at some videos that I was kind of assigned to look at, like things with Charlie Chaplin and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, so my last video, I was juggling a little bit, and so you've seen my skills so far. So to speak. <laughs> but I have until, like, March probably to get them down anyways. Oh, also, this is Crystal. It's my little snake bracelet. It's a snap bracelet. Uh, Justin gave it to me. He has, um, he has one too. His name is Verdi. If you've watched his vlog, if you've watched his vlogs, if not, he, Justin Van Syke on YouTube, you should check it out, because he talks a lot about really cool, like, philosophy and a lot of things, and getting stuff together and all that fun stuff. But yeah, he has a, a green and spotted one, green, white, and spotted one named Verdi, which I think is after a book that was about a, I think it was a snake? Um, and yeah, this one's Crystal. I like Crystal. You <laughs> like? So you might see her on my wrist from time to time. And if you do, that is Crystal. She's good friends with Jimmy. Now, Jimmy, I didn't really talk about this much in my last video. I don't even... I have showed him a couple of vlogs ago. But, um, Jimmy, uh... Jimmy is a really special sort of animal of mine. I've had him for about six years. Uh, he needs his eyes fixed a little bit, but that's okay. And, um, uh, I got him when I started acting. Uh, when I was, uh, I was in the show Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs with the youth theater in my area. And, um, I actually got the lead, which was really, really crazy and cool and an amazing opportunity that I got. Um, probably my 15 minutes of fame sort of <laughs> well for youth theater I suppose but I got Jimmy during that time and that was also during a time I developed this love for raccoons because at my dad's house it's in an area that's like has a ravine nearby and everything lots of trees um I had a lot of raccoon friends la raccoon families that were around and I'd feed them now before you guys freak out I researched them to the core before I started like getting involved with them and like I really I really started finding out how much you know they're kind of looked at society in a negative way and they don't need to be because a lot of them are actually not as bad as people seem to think like for example the the raccoons that I knew they would hang around my cat that I had at my dad's house and, um, they just kind of, like, hung out together. They coexisted really easily. I think one time you'd just find them, like, a few feet away from each other just chilling. It's kind of funny and weird, but exciting. It just kind of shows to me that they're not bad. They're not going to hurt your animals all the time. I mean, do take caution, you know, of course, if you ever want to, like, get involved with wild animals of any sort. Make sure you, like, research it and know what you're getting into, you know. Make sure you know how to handle it. Maybe even how to communicate. But I have a lot of cool stories about that, which I might tell over time. Oh, yeah! I think there's a video! Right! Oh, my God! Duh! Okay, there's a video of my raccoon friends from quite a few years ago on YouTube. Uh, well, let me see what it's called. Uh, uh, it's kind of a really old, old video, so... Yeah, it's called Baby, My Adorable Raccoon Friend. Baby was what I called her. It's from six years ago. Go figure. That's when I got, that was around when I got Jimmy, too. So that, in that video would feature Baby, which is what I ended up calling her, <laughs> because she, she kind of responded well to it, I guess. And, um, yeah, she was definitely a girl. I kind of sensed it when I saw her. I don't know what it was. Uh, 
but I noticed that, like, I think one thing that pointed out is I started seeing her during the day a lot more, uh, in springtime, I think. Was it not spring? I don't know. I saw her during the day at one point, and I was thinking either, because I researched, and either that kind of meant, because they're supposed to be more nocturnal, right? Either it meant that they were maybe, uh, they were sick or that they had kits, baby raccoons, and they were trying to get extra food to bring back to them. And so over time, I actually discovered that she definitely had babies because here's one of my favorite stories. Um, she, uh, there was one night where I came out to feed her and she was acting a little different, more cautious than usual, growling a little bit under her breath. I was kind of like, hmm, okay. Um, like, are you okay? And so I listened, and I just kind of stayed calm, and then I heard this little, you know, under, that's the sound raccoons make. <laughs> and I heard it under the deck, and I was like, oh my god. I was like, I, I know why you're growling, actually. But, like, it wasn't, they also communicate in growls, but it was more of just a cautionary, like, don't try to mess with them, please. But it was very interesting, because when I heard that, I got up slowly slowly and kind of kept my distance and went around her slowly down to the grass and looked under the deck and saw there were two baby kits there and they were the cutest little things ever and she kind of just came over and then looked at me and walked off walked off yeah so she trusts me a lot which was wonderful and very very sweet and so she comes back with a third raccoon that's actually a little bit bigger than the other two so i'm guessing the other two were girls and the bigger one was a boy and it was like she was introducing me to her family like here this is my family can you take care of them too and it that was one of the moments i will never never forget about raccoons and i just i love them a lot but anyway so jimmy Back to that story. Um, Jimmy was given to me by my mom's boyfriend at the time um, because he knew I loved raccoons. And then it kind of became this, like, symbol of good luck to me, you know. And so I started just taking him everywhere. And so now I'm known as the raccoon girl, which I don't mind at all. I don't care if there's any weird associations with it. I like raccoons. It's straightforward. It's true. That's how I am. And everybody loves Jimmy. And appreciates him. So yes, I bring him to school. Yes, college. <laughs> You'd be surprised how many people actually accept that in college. <laughs> and in high school. I did it in high school too. But I also just had that air like, I don't care what you think. So most people were just like, I respect that. And I think he's cute anyways. So why not? And he can be a good conversation starter. Anyways, my battery's getting low. So I better plug my phone in. But that's the story of Jimmy. Alright? Bye guys. Peace.